this is how I color graded my shot from this to this. So this footage was shot on my Canon C70 and this was shot on C-Log2. And I'll play through this clip really quick. This is just a romantic shot of the couple dancing right in front of this light right here at this window that's giving them light. And I'm exposing so that the highlights on their skin isn't completely clipped. And as you can tell on the waveform right here, we still have a little bit of information in the brightest part of her skin. And over here, I've already built out my uh, node tree, but I haven't done any actual color grading or color correction to these shots right now. And so let's go ahead and undo all of the uh, nodes right now. So this is what the shot looks like after I take it from C-Log2 to Rec. 709. And let's take a look at what I am actually doing here. In this second node right here, I have a color space transform, a CST that's taking it from Canon Log2 into DaVinci Wide Gamut color space and DaVinci Intermediate Gamma. And then this second to last node right here, I am taking it from DaVinci Wide Gamut back into Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And Rec. 709 is the default color space that most broadcast uh, devices are displaying colors at. So now that I have all that in place, I can start color correcting. And I'm gonna be in my uh, first node right here on the second row. This is my primaries, which is uh, just these wheels right here. And I'm gonna be uh, tweaking these exposure levels and making sure that we can actually have a good working base before we move on to the next steps. So right here, I'm going to move the offset wheel and just crank it up just a little bit so we can actually see um, the face right here. So that's a good exposure for the face right there. And I'm going to come down on the lift just a little bit. It's important to note that the shot itself, most important part of the shot is the couple. And instead of like focusing on the other stuff, these stuff right here, the shadows should be darker because there wasn't much light. There wasn't much exposure in this room to begin with because they're only lit by this window right here on the left. And so I don't mind if I'm like crushing the shadows uh, too much. Like that looks okay right there. I'm looking at my scopes as well, making sure that it's not completely crushed. And you can see some more detail uh, in the shot, in the shadows and the stair railings and stuff. I'm gonna lift my gamma just a little bit as well. And you can see already like that does a lot for the face right here. Um, and maybe touch the gain just a little bit. I don't want to, too much. I don't, I don't want to adjust that too much because that's affecting the most expo overexposed part uh, of their skin. Um, as you can tell right here, if I mouse over her, uh, the overexposed part of her skin, you can still tell that it's not completely at 100 IRE. So it's not completely overblown, like overexposed, uh, which is nice, which is, uh, which is great. And again, I don't mind overexposing because on the day of it kind of looks like that. You're just not going to be able to uh, completely evenly expose for direct sunlight while retaining exposure in the room itself. So unless you have some external source of light or artificial light in here, um, that's going to be pretty impossible. So I'm going to accept the fact that this is going to be overexposed for sure, like 100%. Okay, um, that looks fine. That looks pretty good for now. Uh, we might come back and, and tweak just a little bit. Um, as far as like white balance goes, I, this looks really good already. Uh, maybe I'll take away some red. Maybe it's a little bit too warm and I'll take some warmness, some red or an orange away by, um, just using the offset wheel and just making sure that this is, uh, nice and white, like it should be. Now, before I move on to the next step, I know that I'm going to be using a film print emulation, which is a very popular way to sort of finish your, uh, your shot. Um, and what I'm using is the Kodak 2383 LUT, and I'll go ahead and enable this for you guys to see. And this is in a compound node at the very end. I'm gonna go into the compound node and I have another color space transform here and that's taking it from Rec. 709 Gamma 24 into Rec. 709 Cineon Film Log. And that's how I am able to use the, uh, the film print emulation correctly. So this one I'm using the Rec. 709 Kodak 2383 D60, which is the LUT that I like to go for. That's the film print emulation that I like to go for for pretty much all my films. And you can kind of see how it's affecting my image already. Um, and again, the shadows here might look too, might look a little bit crushed, but I'm okay with it again, because the room itself wasn't super bright because this is our only source of uh, light right here from the window. And so I'm going to 
keep playing with the gamma. I'm going to push the gamma up just a little bit. And that looks okay. I'm actually going to, I think I'm going to keep it like around here. The lift looks good here. Uh, gain. That's too much. That's too much right there because I don't, I don't want to overexpose the uh, brightest part of her skin and his suit too much. Um, that looks pretty good right there. I'm going to add some saturation right here with the saturation wheel. As I'm adding this, I'm just keeping an eye on his skin tone and making sure that uh, it's not like he isn't too orange. Like that's too orange right there. And so I'm going to dial it back. And maybe around, maybe around right there. That looks pretty healthy. Um, you can always check using the vector scope and using this line right here is the skin tone indicator is this line right here. You can toggle it on and off. And that's a great way to just check to make sure that um, his skin tone is like right around where we want it to, uh, like whatever looks natural. So um, I'm actually gonna push the offset just a tad bit right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. And you can see in the scopes, uh, that circle. I like having that circle in the middle of the line as much as possible. And that looks to me, looks really good for his skin tones. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Scrubbing through the footage one more time. That to me looks really good right there. I'm going to go into my second note right here and add a little bit of color boost. See what five does. Nice. So that gives you a lot of uh, color immediately richness into the shot. Okay. Off on, it's very subtle off on, but you can tell like the lamp right here, the wallpaper off and on just like kind of adds a little bit more life and warmness into the, uh, in, into the image. If you look at the skin tone right here, off on a little bit more warmth into the skin tone, makes it feel a little bit more alive. Cool. Overall, this shot already just with like the primaries, uh, a little bit of color boost, and then the uh, film print emulation looks really good already. You have the, you know, the teal right here, the teal, and then the orange in the skin tone and the wallpaper, that color scheme going on. You don't have to go for that color scheme every single time, but um, this looks really good. You could uh, isolate out them right here and I'll do a power window and this is way too big. I'm gonna come down and we come down from here. Let's do a power window. If we wanted to, we can bring them out just a little bit. Spread it out, feather, make sure the feather is uh, at its max because uh, we want a very soft uh, power window instead of a very like uh, apparent one. We can take it up a lot. That's too much. Come back right down. I'm just using the offset wheel right here. I've seen some people uh, use the curves tool. That also works. Gonna use the curves tool here. Just subtly bringing it out. I'm gonna control, turn it off, turn it back on, off and on. One more time, off and on. And that just gives them a little bit more of a pop. Actually, I'm going to go here and let's just track and make sure that it sticks on them for the entire duration of the shot. This is like one thing I love about Resolve is the tracker tool. Okay, cool. So the next thing that I wanna do is pretty much make a uh, emphasis on this window right here. You see this beam of light right here? Uh, I want to emphasize that and make it more apparent so that you can see like a ray of like light that's just directing um, straight onto the couple right here. So I'm gonna go into this bottom parallel node right here. This is these two are parallel nodes. I'm gonna go into the bottom one right now and I'm gonna create another power window using the uh, using the square one. Gonna just resize it here. I can grab onto that. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna make this like rectangle that sort of is uh, smaller on the left end. And then as it goes to the right, it gets bigger um, just like that. And I'm going to soften the whole thing out. So feather out the, the box, the power window. 
colon just like that. I'm gonna go back to uh, my curves. You can also use uh, the offset uh, wheel right here. I'm going to just use reset and use the curves like that and just slightly bring it up and make this ray of like light much more apparent. Maybe I can adjust the uh, the size of the power window right here to make it look a little bit more natural. Right there, off and on. Nice, cool. The amount of contrast in this shot is great. Um, we have like that uh, ray of light that's shining onto our couple. Um, the couple themselves are lifted a little bit um, so that they're kind of like the highlight of the shot, even though they didn't really need that. Uh, this is off and on. Yeah, even though they didn't really need that, I like um, emphasizing them for this shot in particular. So yeah, I mean, honestly, we didn't really do too much um, to this shot. It was just a matter of like color balancing and color correcting and also using the uh, film print emulation. That did a lot of the heavy lifting for us so that we didn't really need to do too much besides uh, power windowing. Um, and just doing a couple things here and there. So this is completely before, no color correcting, no uh, color space transform, uh, and then this is after. I love it, uh, and then that's where I'm gonna stop. Hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions.